of xy is x squared minus y squared plus minus <coughs> x squared. Initial point negative two, negative two. So we want to minimize this. So the good thing that um, is that this is these are both positive. So you know that that that. Um, So there's a minimum, right? You know, there's a minimum. Uh, let's look at the gradient. So the gradient. You know, let me call this G. So we stay, we stick with that. Uh, so the gradient of G is with respect to x first. So it's going to be two x squared minus y times two x plus 2, 1 minus x times negative 1. And the other one is with respect to y, so it's 2 x squared minus y times negative 1. So let's simplify it. So it's going to be 4x cubed minus 4xy plus 2x minus 2 and 2y minus 2x squared. Okay, so that's the gradient. Okay, so basically the minimum the minimum is gonna they're gonna occur where a gradient there are no constraints. Means that the gradient equals zero. And of course you could do it symbolically and hope to get some solutions, right? In fact, you're not you're not probably going to get only one solution. I don't know if anybody tries symbolically, but um, <clears throat> let's see. X equals one. I'm just wondering. X equals one. Y equals one. Is is it a is it a yeah? This is a this is a solution, right? So it means that uh, the minimum of G is zero. But in case there are other solutions, okay, so one one is a critical point, and the value of G at one one is zero. So it means that one one is a minimum, global minimum, right? Again, because because of the way this function looks, right? So so far we we're we're in the examination stage. Okay. All right. So we have a global minimum, but starting at negative two, negative two doesn't guarantee that you're going to get to one one, right? You may get to you may have to find you know other solutions. In fact, you don't have to do that. You just have to run the code, starting with negative two, negative two, and see where it stabilizes. I mean, where it, where it converges. And where it converges should be a solution to this. OK? 
Okay. Well, maybe not uh, strict, but but at least, you know, where the gradient is less than epsilon. So, where each of this is satisfied within epsilon, uh, within an error epsilon. Okay. All right. So now, uh, what do we do? So now we start the conjugate gradient method. <clears throat> so we have the initial point. Okay. And I think what it would be good to do would be to say the following x. So treat of x as being x y. Okay. So x x naught is going to be negative two negative two, and p naught minus the gradient of g at x naught. Now, how do you write this actually in the code? You would just say. I would put transpose here. In the code is you I think there's gonna be a matrix multiplication or not. Sorry, this is not it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, but um now let's not put transpose. So G is gonna look like this, the grain of G. So this is just gonna be four X the first component of X right X naught of 1 or 3 minus 4 X naught X naught of 1 X naught 1 times x not 2 and so forth right well actually I'm waiting to get it oh I'm sorry I'm waiting to get it um, in the white so I have a white background yeah let's give it a little bit more And so forth, right? So that would be sort of hard coding the gradient. Um, of course, a more efficient way would be to sort of call. You can you can call a function, but I haven't showed you that. Uh, you can you can define a function, separate function, let's say gradient, and you have the inputs. Negative two, negative two. So you, do, you just have to write this one, one, one time, and then you can call it, or you can do inline function, also. But I mean, as I said, if you if you're not comfortable with the, with those, uh, just just write it once, and then you cut and copy and paste it. Uh, because there's going to be a few more places where you're going to have to compute the gradient. Well, even here, you're going to have to say the um, norm of of p naught. Right? Or the gradient <coughs> square. I'm going to have to compute this. Um, P2, I don't know, P naught 2. Yeah. We can call it norm P. And of course, you're going to say, well, if if the um, if this quantity is le is is less than epsilon, you're already done, right? If not, you go in that while loop. Hopefully, I can. 
remote to that uh, computer so we can run it. Um, and then you you basically follow those those uh, steps like in the quadratic function case um, until you get to the minimization problem, right? Okay, and the minimization problem will be to minimize. So choose choosing TK is such that G at XK plus T Uh, PK is minimized. Okay. Now, what is XK plus T? Uh, what, is, what is this expression? It's going to be you plug in that here, it's going to be fourth order in T, right? It's going to be fourth order in T. So, the question is how do you um, implement that? Well, let's First, let's just. Um, hmm? You could incorporate just that, like a golden ratio, for instance. But how do you decide what your interval is to start with on that? Right. Well, um, so the, the first thing to do is to say, well, if I have xk plus t pk here, okay? Then this is going to be x uh, k plus. Well, there's an x and a y, so let's imagine like this. So I have um, let's say p has components. Um, give us give us some names. Um, q and r. Okay. It's going to be q square minus yk plus trk squared plus 1 minus xk plus t q k squared. Okay? Right, so the first thing here is to kind of look at um, this function as a function of t. Okay, so let's see. What's the coefficient of t to the fourth? So it's going to be... Q, K, uh, Q, K, Q squared, squared, right? Q squared, squared, so Q to the fourth. Plus T cubed, plus T squared, and so forth, right? Okay, so now when you look for a minimum, point is the following that you don't you may not actually get to a global minimum of this function so the function in the direction of pk may actually look like this right what's a quadratic uh, fourth order function looks like this right so this is t and this is g right let me put tpk here so in the direction of tpk that's it and when t is 0 It's the value at xk, so it may actually be okay. So practically, what are you what are you going to do? You're going to start the search at zero, right? 
And it looks like the golden ratio is not probably the best one because you would have to kind of assume where the minimum is. Okay? So I would do the more peasant one, which says finite steps, step size, right? Um, one thing that you could actually do is you could actually see what the derivative of this is at zero. How do you see what the derivative of this is at zero? Well, when you differentiate this fourth order, it's going to be at zero. Everything that has t survives except the term with t, right? The term with t. So the term with t times no t, right? So the term with t, you basically see what the coefficient of that is. So that's going to be you square, so nothing will have t in it from, from this part, right? So the only term with t will be twice 1 minus xk times q, okay, right? So it's basically this number. The sign of that is going to be the derivative g prime at 0. So let's say at a certain iteration it's negative. <clears throat> if it's negative, it means you're going increasing in t, right? So you can do a fixed fixed step size search. Um, in the positive direction. When you differentiate this, this is going to be t cubed. Right. And at 0, it's going to be 0. Oh, okay. So at 0. So the search always just starts with t equals 0, because you're starting at xk, and you're going xk plus tpk. You're going in the direction of, t, of tpk, right? So you'd like to know how can you, you know, what t you can pick to minimize, to make that smaller. I mean, you may not be able to globally minimize it, but you're going to mis minimize it. So, uh, so the sign of this, of this expression is going to say, am I going search right or left? I mean, in my code, I wonder if that's already embedded there, so... Let's look at the code. I think you may. You go wherever G is decreasing. The question the question is, is this always going to be negative? And I don't, I don't think it's necessarily the case. You're not going, in the conjugate gradient method, you're, ne you're not going in the direction of the negative gradient, always, right? Going in the direction of, of the, the conjugate gradient. Of the conjugate direction. But that doesn't mean that you're going always. But if t is negative, you're going the opposite. Yeah, but the conjugate gradient may actually be at an angle greater than 9 degrees from the up, from the... The conjugate gradient may actually be in the direction of the gradient. The conjugate direction may be in the, actual, in the direction of the gradient. So you need to go negative. You're going... Remember, T is such that this is minimized. So, I mean, maybe in all cases this is always going to be negative. But as you see from the expression, you know, if x is negative here, this is positive. Q, it depends on what the, the conjugate directions are. I mean, okay? So it's no longer the fact that you have to have t to be positive. It's whichever t is minimizing that. You're going in that direction, right? Um, and I was looking at my code here. Let me
Yeah, so my code actually already says... I mean, picks the value to be negative. Um, so do you know how to actually modify that? Let's see what the picture was here. So the picture was, we're, we're picking, so this is a fourth order, by the way. It's a fourth order one, right? So we're going, we're starting at this value. So you should be starting with t equals zero in your function, right? Um, and how do we decide to go left? Well, we compute the derivative at this point, right? At zero. At the initial point. But we're starting at zero. So yeah, we're starting at zero. So. Right, so let's let's start at zero and see what happens here. Let's how, how to modify how to modify this. Let's start at zero, and <coughs> we have to find the derivative, the sign of the derivative at zero. So what's the derivative? Well, this won't matter. This won't matter. This will be one, right? So it's positive. So it means we go to the left. So that's why it's negative. So how do we embed this in a code? We just say, um, you know, f prime at 0 is 1. And again, 1 because that's the coefficient of t. When you differentiate this with respect to t and set it at t equals 0, that's what's going to survive, the coefficient of t. Yeah. So that's this. This one is that is that uh, coefficient. And then I think there is a sine function, isn't it? We can make it. Um, Yeah, it's basically the sign of a, of a number is 1, 0, or negative 1. Yep. So basically, you would just say sign of f prime at 0 times the step size, and we're going to pick always opposite to that, right? So if this is positive, then it's going to be negative, right? So that's what you have to modify. And again, how do you embed this in the code for that particular problem? It'd be as simple as taking that expression, again, just that you did it by hand, okay? Hard, type it in. What was it? 1 minus x k times the first component or second, first component of q of p. And you say if this basically you're going to say is the sign of this. Uh, what's the step size you're going to pick? Doesn't matter, right? You can you can pick 0 0.1 for instance. You may just have to go, you know, a lot of steps before you come back, and then and tolerance again. You fix the tolerance there. Does it really matter? Yeah. All that critical, and you're going to use a little bit more computation. I mean, it's going to be a waste of computation, but I mean, it's still going to come back. I mean, if you, if, I was right. I'm just making the first step real big and just saying, hey, if, it's, if it goes the wrong way, then it's just going to turn around. And yeah. Yeah. Anyway. And even if you have a small step, I mean, this is going to catch the, the sign of the derivative. Right. So you could ignore it. You're right. You could ignore this, putting this. Uh, you could go in the wrong way. But pick the small step, or the step to be small okay. initially, so that if you go in the wrong direction, immediately you go back. Um, the whole point is that being a fourth order function, this search is not going to go, you know, to infinity, because you have this well thing. So it's it's going to infinity at plus or minus infinity. All the problems here have this t 
I mean, when you plug in T and you search that a minimum is going to be a fourth order or a second order or sixth order, right? It's never going to be odd, odd, odd um, power because then you will never find a minimum. Okay? Does that help you a little bit more or? I mean, that's not the most uh, efficient way of finding, you know, the minimum. I mean, but it is numerically, you know, one way to find the minimum. That you can just... For T, which at each step. So this has to be embedded in that loop. Okay. Um, I wasn't planning to actually do this. And again, this is hard coding that. Um, Expression in your case, it will be. Maybe we should do it for an example and just sacrifice this half hour, huh? Okay. Um, okay. Let me let's do it for number two then. Okay. So that's going to be easier for you. Um, <coughs> So let's go and f and start with the conjugate gradient method. But again, this is this is written for a quadratic function, right? So I'm going to save this as a new file. I'll just say general's uh, conjugate gradient, okay? So let's see, how do we change it? I guess we don't have to do any of this. Does anybody know how to get rid of this thing? Like full screen? I'm afraid I have to go to options full screen Okay, now I made it even smaller, so it's... Alright, so... Um, so let's start by, uh, by inputting the initial condition. Initial point, negative 2, negative 2. Now I cannot even make this bigger, so let's forget it. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we're going to start with initial condition, negative 2, negative 2. I like to keep it like vector. I don't know if it doesn't matter to you. Um, then we're going to start P0 to B. Somebody can uh, dictate that to me. talking about the um, uh, P naught, the gradient. 
because this is the opposite, the uh, negative gradient. 4x cubed plus 4xy plus 2x. Hold on. 4x cubed. Okay, and? Okay, and um, 2 minus? Well, since I'm doing this, let me show you. So basically, one one way to kind of so this needs to have a vec a vector. So we're gonna it's a matrix, right? Okay. So this this basically would would, would compute the gradient. We have to put a minus in front. I think. Okay. The initial p naught is the is opposite gradient, right? Okay. Uh, so let me show you how to do this actually when you are uh, like in a, in a separate file. So one thing, <coughs> one way you can, so you don't have to type this ag uh, again and again. One, one way to do this is to say um, gradient, there isn't even a function I think gradient, but let's, um, I'm going to, I'm going to define the, to compute the gradient of g, right? So gradient fun of at a point. So I'm going to say at a point a and b, those those will be the inputs. And now I'm going to define z to be uh, what was it? This expression. Okay. I'm sorry. At x, I should say at x. At, okay, you have to give a name. At x naught. Let's do at x naught. Okay, so we don't have to modify any of this. Okay, so the output of this is going to be exactly those, like a column vector, right? And the input well should be a column if you want. Uh, and now when you save it, you should save it exactly with that name. So it has to be gradient fun okay so in so this is this is a file we already now have and now we can just call this of x naught okay so what's going to happen is it's going to compute exactly that uh, opposite gradient and now so I don't do this anymore I don't have G's in that code anymore so now I have this, while this is happening, uh, well, we do have G. G should be the gradient. And the reason why I want to do the gradient is, is I'll have to use that as a, as a test, right? So G naught is the... Let's see. G naught is minus P naught. Is that going to be okay with you? So this is just so I don't have to call it again. Okay. So it's just so <clears throat> if if the norm of this is is greater than epsilon, then we go in the while loop, and in the while loop, this is the place where we have to compute T, right? So we have to remove that, and we have to modify, uh, change it with basically that line search method. But let's say we found a t, then then is this still uh, accurate? So we're going in this direction, p naught from x naught, right? This is no longer accurate, right? The new g will be what?
बिल्कुल भी नहीं द ग्रेडियंट देन वो गोना कंप्यूट बेर आट बी द नॉर्म ऑफ द ग्रेडियंट स्क्वेर माइनस डिवाइड बाई द नॉर्म ऑफ जी नॉट स्क्वेर दैट इज द प्रीवियस जी ओके दैट्स करेक्ट And then we're going to choose p to be minus the gradient at the new point. That's g plus beta times the previous uh, conjugate direction, p naught. Okay, and we have a few more things to do. The first thing is let, let's keep this plot so we can. It's a 2D plot, so we don't have the third uh, component. But I think there's this first component. Okay, x naught has to be renamed p naught and g naught. Yep. All this seems to be correct. Um, I'm a little bit nervous with the x naught in the function definition, but we may we, we may need to change that. We'll see if that's required. Sometimes when you use a variable in the main code, you want to Go when, when you go to call a function like this, you want to give a different name there, just to be totally independent. Uh, but that, that may, this may work. I, I think it works. No, yeah. <coughs> we have the expert here. <laughs> we'll ask. Let's see. So how do we how do we pick t now? We can actually call this, make this a function, right? Or is it too fancy? Maybe not. So we would we would just have to kind of um, copy and paste, copy and paste, right? Do we do that, or let's do that because, or should we? Can we uh, can we make it as a separate file and call it? No, no, from here on. Yeah. Well, let me make this a function. If you if you. Um, I'm going to save this as um, minimizer. Okay, I'm going to call this to be minimizer, and so this is going to have to go. So I'm going to say function um, z uh, t min equals minimizer. Well, now we have to kind of fit in what. The point where we're computing this, so x and p, right? Yeah. So x not and p not, right? Remember, because you're going from x k plus t p k, so you have to fit this. These are the two vectors that you have to fit in, and whatever comes out is a, is a scalar, is a number, right? Okay. Now, again, we've kind of modified this, make this a function file. You have to kind of come out at the end and say, "What is t min?" Okay. So t min is has to be defined at the, at the bottom of this, as the uh, the final answer here. So t min is is I think t one, whatever, whatever is going to be this t here. Okay. So now let's do the search. So in the search, what we're going to do is we're going to start at zero, as we said. And I don't want to do any plot. I don't want to plot this because it would be crazy to do um, a plot for each iteration. So <clears throat> so instead, what do we do here? We say. Um, F is a function to be minimized here. Okay, so what's the function to be minimized? So the original function, so g 
original, we have to define that too. Let's say original functional, I'm going to call it original function, fun, original fun. Um, add the point x naught plus t naught times p naught. Okay? Let me know if you don't follow this. I mean, it's so I'm going to have to define the original function in a separate file, so I can call it here. And now I'm just going to in this code, it's just going to t naught is going to get modified, and that's basically how x naught and y naught and p naught are are fixed. They are fed in this uh, function, and just t naught is going to change. Okay. Now, what is f prime? at 1, I mean uh, at, at t equals 0, we said we should not worry about this, right? If we go in the wrong direction, you could hard code this into, but let's, let's just not worry about it, right? And let's say we go, let's, let's try to go to in the positive direction, okay? And let's see if there's ever, we're going to have to go in the negative direction. Let's go positive direction. So I'm not going to say this is opposite to anything because we don't know what the gradient is unless we compute it. Um, and let's say we want t with this, uh, with this um, error, okay? Then what's happening? It doesn't have to be very accurate. It doesn't have to be very accurate, no. So maybe we'll give it a few. Uh, less, a few less zeros here. Okay. Uh, let's see, anything to be changed here? Yes. Original fun. Of this, actually, right? And here is just a T1, right? Do you see the kind of... Uh, I'm getting more and more anxious because when you start running this, it just has to spit the right numbers, right? So, um, okay, and while this is uh, less than the previous one, you rename t, you go uh, in the same direction. We don't want to plot anything. <clears throat> and we do this again. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I should have done that. <coughs> okay. Um, right. So this 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 while loop is going to go as long as you keep decreasing. Then we don't want to display anything. I'm just going to comment this. Uh, no plot. And then we go in the opposite direction. Okay, and let's pick one tenth of this, so it's like one order of magnitude less. And this is okay, right? Because it's minus whatever it was. And then we start. Uh, we we rename t naught t one. At the end, I'm just going to say t min is this, and we don't. Yeah, we can display the number of iterations within each. Okay. Hmm? Thank you. Yeah. All right. So that's. This is minimizer. I'm going to save this. Okay. And now remember, I need to call uh, original fun. So I'm going to function. The original fun has to give you output a, 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 a number once it's, it's called for. So original fun. 
And remember that you have to do this for uh, you should should choose names that are not in the already defined in MATLAB. So that's why could be you have to be sometimes creative. Now what do we we just evaluate the function g at some point, right? So we're gonna uh, don't call x naught. Let's call uh, z naught. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is z naught is gonna be a vector, right? So we're gonna have two component vectors. So we're gonna have z equals z naught, the first component square minus the second component. Everything squared plus one minus that's the original function. X z naught first component of z naught everything squared. Okay? That's it. And we have to save this as original fun. It has to be saved in the same directory. So so now we I think we have everything. We go back to our general and we just say what? T equals minimizer of <coughs> x naught plus uh, excuse me, p naught has two components, right? Two inputs. That's what the minimizer was expecting to to get. X naught, p naught. Um, and we don't want to see it. Okay. It's just going to tell us how many iterations it took to get to there. Are we ready to go? <laughs> oh yeah. At the bottom, I I, I was saying uh, very you know compare with the actual result, but we don't have that, of course. So we don't have. Actually, we're going to do this verification with what? With doing symbolically. Which doesn't work on this remote, huh? Okay, so you have to do it. If you want to verify, you'll do it symbolically on a different machine. Try it again. All right. That's a big X. That's a huge X. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I don't think we... Well, let's let's put a pause somewhere so we can actually run this one by one. So I'm going to say pause. Is that pause? I think that's pause. So um, so we're going to do it and see what what is happening step by step. Oh, it doesn't say what the number of iterations. I see. So the big. The first thing is already big Z. Okay, I'd like to semicolon so it doesn't show me what this Z is because we don't we don't want to see that. Okay, so that was the first thing to do. And let's see anywhere else. Many times you want to hide so it doesn't. You just want to see the important one. So the important one is actually T, not T. X naught, right? So let's do that again. So still showing me Z. So somewhere else there is a Z that shows up. That's okay. Okay, that's okay, but we can change that Z1. That's well, not the problem. I think the problem is the problem is we don't see what what is going on step by step. So let's, let's just.
let's clear the whole thing and, and start over again. So Okay, so that's the initial point, right? I don't know why the counter is already six. Oh, yeah, because it's already found a T, so we can we can see. Oops, I'm sorry. Okay, so that's that's the right thing. Oops. Okay, so there was there was um it was actually going to the right spot. Like two and two, no. And then it eventually it just uh, blew up. So okay. So anyway, I'll I'll, I'll debug this and and post it if you want to use this one. If you don't want to create your own, but um, as you saw that it kind of started uh, nicely, and then kind of at some point something happened, like um, the denominator became too big, right? Because that's the only reason why it would go this way. But it, it basically, you can see where the uh, search is, and you could actually plot. I think there is even a plot, huh? But we went too far, so let's. Let me do this. Uh, let me run this. And we're going to go only a few steps. So you see, it started at 0, 0. X got. Right, and the picture is. <clears throat> I'm sorry for um, this bad resolution here, but um, okay. I'll go one more step. You see, that it starts at negative two, negative two, and it kind of it should go to one one. I mean, now that we, right? Uh, we, it looks like it's going in that, in that direction. <clears throat> okay. So it crossed X is already positive. <clears throat> Let's see. Ah, okay, so that's the place where it should have converged okay so the, the question is the next one is gonna be right so oh it hasn't got there I'm sorry yeah hasn't gotten there yet yeah but it actually goes to 2 2 And then it keeps going. Anyway, so I'll I'll debug this. But beta, are you doing beta equals zero every Oh, that's what. That's what. That's what. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's the problem. So um, okay. So how do you change that? Or maybe I can do that. Um, well, what is happening here is, yeah. Thanks for pointing it out. Yeah. So this this should be zero every three steps, right? So how do you do that? I mean, there are many ways. Um, we have the every two variables. So n is two. Two variables. Every two steps. Yeah. So the first time is zero because beta beta zero is zero, right? Beta one is this, and beta two should be zero. So we can actually look at this counter. Right? And say if counter is what I did is just took modulo two or modulo whatever of that number. You mean the function modulo? Well, um, okay, that, that's the fancy way. But I don't want to do the fancy way. I want to just say, if the if the counter divided by two equals the flow.
4 is like the integer value, right? Is the greatest less than the number? So the counter is. Oh, I oh I see what you did, but if the basically if this holds, then you have a even number, right? And if it doesn't hold, you have an odd number, okay? But again, there is a fancier way to do it. But if this is the case, then we do beta equals this. Uh, actually, beta equals zero. If it's even. Else, this, right? And. And I, I don't want to see beta, so I'm just going to semicolon. Okay. All right. Let's do it again, see what happens. Oh, I'm sorry, you have to finish this before it's um, you run it again. So I run this. Okay, so that's already Yep. Okay. So in the picture it looks looks like this. So And now, if you have symbolic capabilities, you can actually um, convince yourself by plotting the surface or the level curves. Um, you can also see if, if you always go in the positive t direction or not. I mean, you can do it from here. You can see the code. You can modify it in the code. So where was the minimizer was this? So let's just put t min as this, so we see. Uh, is this going to give you? No. Yeah, if it's positive, it's positive. Yeah, if I just print it. Oops. Oh, it wasn't finished because it was going. Okay, so now <clears throat> we don't want to do this uh, pause anymore. We just want to run it. So oh, I need to save the minimizer. Mm. See, it keeps going. It's actually never stopping, huh? <laughs> yeah, but it should be going smaller and smaller. So. Okay. Well, we got as close as we could get in our. Okay. Um, <clears throat> See, because every every odd step, you're going the opposite gradient, so you do go, you do decrease g, you are, you are unless unless t is negative. But I think Yeah, let me leave the pause and run and see what the T's are. 
What is the T? Okay, so T is um, is positive. 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 Okay, this particular T is very small. So that could be a problem. It means that you're not moving at all. I mean, this, this means you're not moving at all. I actually don't know why I got to negative, uh, 10 to negative 17, because our step size should stop at 10 to negative 3. So this could be an, the error. Yeah, because in our line search, uh, T is we said that you stop after the step size becomes smaller than 0 0.001. So that's, that's, that's sort of a possible error there. Hmm? I, I have a feel, and uh, again, I'll, uh, I have, you know, it's, it's always a good idea when you do coding like this to, in the functions, to give it a different name than what it is in the main code, the variables. Again, it may not be make a difference, but um, call it XX, I don't know. <coughs> and of course, this needs to be saved. You don't run, you run the code. Minimizer as and within the function, is, it's okay to have the same. Yes, there is. I'm sorry. It's yeah. Now there is edit. Yeah, it's like find and replace. Um, okay, so sorry, I have to run this. Um, you got to interrupt. I don't know. So, um, I think it, it's pretty robust. You just have to stop after a few steps. Um, if T becomes this small, there's probably an error here. But um, you have the code. I mean, you, I'll post the code for number three, which is you just put a, a hundred in the right places instead of one. Um, I'd like to give you one more problem since we didn't go to the next section. Um, let me do number 11. This is going to be a s uh, still a fourth order in T. Okay. Okay, so um, I should be posting this code, you know, within an hour. You can um, you can take it and modify it for problem number nine, for problem number ten, three, and for problem number eleven. For problem number eleven, remember there are four variables, not two. Okay. For number nine, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think steepest descent is already. You have the code for steepest descent? For any function? No. No, okay, so don't do it then. No. Steepest descent for uh, number nine. Because you'd have to create a code for that. and I mean, if you do, that's fine. You can compare the two, see which one's faster. 
Um, also, I'd say if you have if you have access to a symbolic capability computer like one of the labs, or you can remote to the Linux servers, not to the Windows server. Um, <clears throat> well, no, don't do that because you need to. What well, would be nice to print uh, or actually to see the the, the minima, the possible minima, see the landscape. See the landscape, you know, graph this function and see where the minima are and basically where this search, how is it going? Where is it, you know, which valley? Um, in particular, what happens if you choose a different starting point, you know? If you have two minima and you choose the initial point close to the minima, uh, what is happening? So, and Wednesday we're going to start chapter five. I'll ask you to kind of start reading maybe the first two sub sub subsections or sections in chapter five. Just go over them. I mean, we'll we're pretty much start with cha with uh, section three in chapter five. Chapter five is kind of big. Oh, and I should say we don't meet Friday, but we meet Thursday. <laughs>